Hey there everybody! Um, so I woke up this morning and I decided I wanted to do something special for you guys because I've been receiving this question a lot in my Facebook group and I've actually received this via email and one of my rules as um, someone who loves to serve you guys is that if I receive a question more than three or four times I need to do something to sort of create a documentation of answering that question. So that's what this is in this video. I am going to show you in this video how to use Canva or PicMonkey to use mock-up images for your own designs. If you're someone who wants to sell things like t-shirts or something like that, let me show you exactly what I mean here. Let's see. If you're someone who sells, you know, t-shirts or signs or mugs and you want to learn how to do this mock-up here like you're seeing um, by using an image that you purchase and then your design that goes over the top, I just want to show you how to do that in free software, canva.com or pickmonkey.com. Either will work and I'm going to show you both processes in case um, people prefer one over the other. Um, I've used both many, many times. Okay, so we're going to start in Canva. Um, Canva has become my personal favorite. I used to use PicMonkey all of the time, and I only rarely use it now because I feel like, for the most part, Canva gives me what I need. So if you go to canva.com, you'll see something that looks similar to this. Now for this, you're going to want to think about creating a design. So before you actually um, create your design here by clicking this purple button at the top right side, you might want to look at whatever your mock-up image size is. So for example, let me come over here and decide on what image I'm going to use real quick so I can show you the exact process that I would do. Um, okay, so I'm going to choose this Christmas shirt image here. And let me open the file location so I can actually see the dimensions. Okay, so the dimensions are um, 3130 by 2087. You don't have to do this step because there is a way to resize it, but I like to do it um, just because it takes one less step out later on. So I'm going to click on custom dimensions down here, and I'm going to type in the same dimension. So it's 3130. Okay, and then I'm going to hit create new design. You might want to hit the little lock icon too. Um, I'm going to hit create new design. And it's now giving me a blank canvas here that is the same dimensions as the photo for the mock-up that I'm going to want to bring in. So um, over here on Canva, if you're not familiar with it, there is like they have a template section, an upload section, which is where you're going to bring in your image. They also have their own photos here, but you have to subscribe to be able to access these. Um, but this part here you can use for free. So this part that I'm showing you is completely for free. You'll just see other things over here that is under the paid plan. So I'm going to come over here to that image, I'm going to grab it, and I'm going to drag it right over here to the upload media. You can also hit the purple button and browse your computer if you want to do it that way. Okay, so once that's uploaded, I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to bring it over here, and I'm just going to stretch it so that it matches the canvas size here, just like that. Now we need to think about um, our actual design that's going onto the mock-up, so I'm going to pull in just an SVG design that I've done. Let's see. I'm just going to pull in this Baby It's Cold Outside SVG just because it's sort of a wintry theme that goes with the Christmas. I'm going to drag it over to uploads just like I did with the mock-up image. Okay, so once I bring it over here, I'm going to size this down. Now, here's a really important note that some people get stumped on if you're really new to this. Your mock-up image needs to have a transparent background. Do you see over here in the upload section how there's no white background behind the baby it's cold outside? It's completely transparent. I've saved my image that way. So make sure whatever you're designing, you export it or save it as like a PNG image that has a transparent background because if you don't, then you're going to have a white block that's floating behind it and it's not going to look natural to the shirt. Okay, so just that's a really important side note for making this work. Otherwise, none of this is going to look right in the end. So make sure you save your design as a transparent background. Okay, so back to what I was just saying there. I'm going to scale this down to my preferred size. If you're selling this, I highly recommend, uh, you know, if you're selling this as an actual like end product design, like a shirt that someone would receive, I highly recommend measuring your shirt and measuring the actual design on the shirt so you can try and get the proportions to be very, very similar because you don't want to be creating misleading photos with the size of the, the, um, 
the design um, or have any unhappy customers because it doesn't represent what they're actually receiving. So I'm just using this for examples purpose here. I'm going to sort of center this down here and enlarge it just a little actually. There we go. Now when I exported this, you might notice that there's some texture to this. This may not be the way yours looks, but when I exported this, um, I had saved it with a glitter texture to sort of give it some um, a little bit more of a realistic touch. Let's say I was using glitter heat transfer vinyl. Um, that's a little bit more of how the texture would look. So I saved it specifically that way. Um, and that's a separate tutorial in and of itself, but um, just to give you a little bit of background as to why my, my file looks that way. So I'm pretty happy with the placement of that. Um, one thing I like to do, this is technically optional and might depend on your particular photo. So one thing I like to do to make it look just a touch more natural is I actually select the design and over here you'll see this little transparency button at the top this is your opacity and opacity or transparency just means how see-through your image is so right now it's hundred percent it's at a hundred which means it's totally solid just as we imported it I like to lower the transparency just by like five to ten because what that does is it brings in just a touch of the shirt color from behind the image and it makes it look like the image the design is more a part of the shirt which is the goal here to make it look as natural as possible so that's what I like to do you don't have to do that part as just an extra little bonus tip if you um, want to play around with that option so there we have it there is my mock-up image using a design I made and a mock-up um, image that I purchased. I got this one, I think, off of Etsy. Um, there's lots of great places that you can find mock-up images with a simple Google search. And then to save this, um, you don't have to save it this big if you don't want to. You can resize this if you want to compress it to make it smaller. Um, however, keep in mind if you're selling on places like Etsy and things like that, they like your images to be at least 2,000 pixels at the smallest point. So in this case here, I'm at 2,087. I probably would just leave this as it is. Um, and of course, you can name your design up here if you want to. Um, but if you do want to resize, come over here to the resize button, make sure your icon here is locked, and then you can just resize this to whatever you want. So let's say I wanna resize this to like 2000, and then it would automatically keep the proportions at 1334. And then you can either copy it and resize it, and it will make a copy of this project, or you can just resize it and just stay within this same project. So that's just a little extra tip there on resizing images if for any reason you decide you want to. When I go to download this, you'll click that download button. It usually will default to PNG, which is the suggested um, format. I also suggest that you leave it as PNG because it is a higher quality image, which is what you want for selling products. And then I'm going to hit the download button. It's going to take a minute to render and export this. And then it'll either add to your downloads folder or it'll pick a place on your, you know, you'll need to pick a place on your desktop or your files, wherever you like to save. And you can just save it. I'm just going to save it as one and then once it's downloaded you can open it up and there's your beautiful image you've successfully completed a mock-up of your product um, so that is the process inside of canva i want to show the process inside of picmonkey just to give you some variation and some comparison of a different um, platform to use i'm going to come over to picmonkey here if you go to picmonkey.com let me actually start on the home page here picmonkey.com um, you can sign up for a free account. There is nothing here you have to pay for that I'm showing that you have to use. Um, and you'll want to hit on either create new or create new image. I suggest clicking on create new and then browse your computer for the mock-up image you want to use. So I'm clicking on computer. I'm going to come over to my recently used images here. Let's I think I'm just going to choose this tote bag image just to give a different example. It's going to load the image exactly at the proportions that it is. So if you don't like the step of needing to type in your dimensions like we did in Canva to bring our image in, then you may prefer PicMonkey because um, you can just upload the mock-up image exactly as it's already saved. 
So once you're in here, you're going to need to follow a similar process, but the way you get your, um, your design onto the bag is a little different. So you want to come over here where it says graphics, sort of near the top on the left hand side, click on graphics and you'll have a bunch of options here that they love to give you, but you'll want to select add your own graphic. So once again, whatever you're bringing in, make sure that it has a transparent background like we talked about. Click on add your own graphic and then you can browse your computer again. I'm gonna go again back to here. I'm just gonna choose this option. And this already has a transparent background like i mentioned over here on your right you can see the layers we're working with so you can see that there is our mock-up and then there is our design coming in on top of it i'm going to shrink this down to my preferred size again keeping in mind that it should look exactly like the product is actually going to look and i'm going to center that to the best of my ability on the bag there until it looks good to my eye and then again, I'm going to do that little trick where I sort of lower the transparency or opacity a little bit just to make it look a touch more natural onto the bag itself. And to do that in PicMonkey, you should have a box that looks something like this. If you're not seeing it, it means it probably got clicked off. And then to get it back, you'll need to actually select something on the screen and it'll pop back up for you. So I've selected um, my image here and this little fade bar, you can just drag that. And I'm going to drag that to about like five, somewhere between five and 7% is usually where I stop. And that just makes it look a touch more natural on the bag itself because a little bit of that bag color is coming through and it just makes it look like it was actually put on the bag. Um, so there we go. There is the process inside of PicMonkey to add our, um, our image to our mockup and create our finalized product image. To download this, you'll click the download button here. They also have an option here um, where you can share it like directly to like a link or to Facebook or to Google Drive if you like to store on there. I always just download it to my computer and save it to my Dropbox, which is what I use. Um, and then you can select your file type here. So you can select JPEG, PNG. I always like to default to PNG if I can. To me, it's just a better quality file. Um, when you're dealing with product images, you want your product images to look as great as possible to capture that customer. So I always go for the best quality. You can always downsize quality, but you can't ever bring quality up once it's been downsized, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to download that and I'll pick a spot on my computer and I'll save that. And here in actually in both Canva and in PicMonkey, just so you know, it saves everything for you automatically. So if you ever want to come back to editing this image, you can just click home, like go to PicMonkey.com home, and you'll see here that your your project that you were just working on is stored. And the same thing here in Canva. If I go home to the home page on Canva and then I click on all your designs. Yeah, there we go. So you'll see your project is saved here. And you can keep these projects organized too by creating folders. That's a whole separate tutorial, but you can create folders here and you can organize things inside of both of these programs if you're gonna use this a lot. So I hope that tutorial helped you. Oh, let me show you our tote bag final image here. There you go, there's my saved image. So we have successfully done this in a couple different ways. I use this all the time when I'm creating SVG files for you guys because I'd like to show how the SVG file can be used. Um, let me see if I wanna show you guys a couple other ones here just so you can see how well this process works. Let's see, mock-up images. So this is one of my very messy mock-up image folders. So I found some mock-up images of like wood signs and here's one I did for a back to school project. So this is actually a mock-up that I did and it looks like it's really on there, um, but that is a mock-up I did. And um, I even found some like ornaments where you can do like ornament mock-ups where you could put a design on the ornament. I think I got those off of Etsy. Um, so there's so many possibilities with using these mock-up designs. Um, and I think I'm gonna write a blog post on this because I think it would really help a lot of people to have all of my resources in one place. Um, so if you want me to write a blog post on it, give me a thumbs up or your favorite emoji in the comments and uh, I will definitely do that for you. I hope this tutorial helps some of you who have been asking this question and make sure you share your mock-up designs in the comments or in the Facebook group. I would love to see what you're coming up with.
Bye for now.